All right. Welcome back to this latest episode of New Narratives. Today, I have with us Ella Israel, a Chicago native currently based in the Bay Area. Ella obtained her BA from the University of Iowa in art history and has a minor in human relations. Ella is one of those incredible multi-hyphenate humans with a ton of creative vitality. She's a writer, a visual artist, a content creator, a social media marketer, and is now joining the latest Hum Hum Facilitator cohort. Ella has invested herself in highlighting and collaborating with businesses that promote body positivity and a stress-free lifestyle. So with that, welcome, Ella. So happy to be here. So happy to have you and get to talk to you about your whole dating life and dating world. What a saga. And... <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Perfect place to jump in. And so I usually like to start off by asking about what is alive for you in your dating life right now? Like what is up? Tell me about your heart. What is kind of the state of the being, if you will, what's going on yeah. over here? Well, I'm happy to say that currently at this time in my life, my heart is very at peace and it's very at ease. And I am someone who came from an anxious attachment style, from a very survivalist mode of being and clinging to relationships. So now to be in a space where I feel comfortable, happy, safe, cared for, and seen in a relationship is like light years from where I was five years ago. So beautiful. And um, talk to me a little bit about some of what has shifted. Like what do you think has contributed to this current experience you're having? Yeah. Well, a little bit of background on me. Um, My current partnership that I'm in, I've been in it for five to six years. I'm going to say like five and a half so that he doesn't come for me later. So five and a half years. Um, and he's actually the first committed partner that I've ever had. Um, I identify as both bisexual and poly, and I actually wasn't poly until I met my current partner. I actually had no clue what that was because coming from the Midwest, you just don't hear language like that. If people are practicing it, there's not much openness about it. Um, so when I met my current partner, He told me he was poly with two partners and I was like, okay, tell me more. What does that look like for you? How does that work? Um, So in deciding whether or not I wanted to be with him, I had to do my own individual research on what is polyamory? What is ethical non-monogamy? Does it align with how I see myself? Is this something that I would be putting onto my identity for the sake of dating this person, or is it something that resonates with me? And so I had to do a lot of intimate personal soul searching. And I realized that I did agree with a lot of the poly politics. And I did see myself as someone who could happily be in that community. Um, But it was rocky joining into a relationship where my partner had two other partners who had their own sets of expectations, needs, their own, you know, attachment styles. And whenever a new partner comes into the situation, it can be a tough, it can be tough to acclimate on all sides. Um, And it wasn't the easiest thing for me as the new person coming in. Um, which I'm sure we can delve more into later. But in the general overview is that my partner's current partners were already unhappy in the dynamic that they were in because they had all been dating for like six to seven years since they were 18, 19. So they picked this up as kids, which I feel like it's safe to say that you're not your most knowledgeable about the ways to be ethical and kind and empathetic in this sort of relationship dynamic when you pick it up at such a young age, though there could be outliers, people who naturally gravitate to it and are able to practice um, in a way that's very healthy, but I don't think that was their case. And so I was already coming into something that was probably at its tail end. So it was a little bit rocky for me. And, um, Something about me said, you know, this person is worth seeing it through. Um, 
we might not know how this is going to work in the long term or what it's going to look like, but my love for this person is just so authentic that I feel like I owe it to myself to give it some time for things to reshift in a way they might need to for me to have the space to grow with him. And so now fast forward five years later, um, we're both in a healthy space, him with his other partners that he currently has, me and trying to date um, and date women more actively, uh, women and non-binary folk, I would say women with an X, um, and really leaning into like my bisexuality. And it's just such a sigh of relief when you're in a space where you can just move freely and excitedly and talk to your partner at the end of each day and communicate through the hard times without fear of abandonment or without fear of if I bring this up, is it going to end the relationship? And it can be hard to get to that point. So I'm happy to have made it at least for the current time being in a place where we're both nestled and nurtured and loved by each other. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm really, um, I'm so curious to dive into some more of the nuances because it's really beautiful to hear about the level of like safety and ease you're experiencing now to where you can actually like kind of go out and explore and like bring new people into the field and having had kind of a rocky start and like this whole discovery of what is actually true for me. I was intrigued to ask you more about like intuitively you had this kind of heart sense or like a heart knowing that I'm picking up on of like this person is worth me exploring. So in terms of that, like what, um, like, what do you think helped you to really connect to that knowing and what edges were you meeting at that time that you needed to kind of work through that you chose to lean into like, okay, this is an edge. And instead of like running the other direction, it's actually something I'm going to work. Like what made yeah. you, yeah. Talk to you about that. Definitely. Well, I will say that in the early years of my dating career, um, like a lot of us, it was more superficial, more in terms of like, what will we look like together? Like, are they the type of person that I could see myself with, like relying very heavily on this idea of a type, right? Which is not something that I conform to right now, but totally understand when people do, because I feel like types develop from wanting safety in what you know and what you're used to, but having a type can also lead you into relationships that have the same negative patterns. Um, so I feel like when I met my person who I'm with now, he was very different than anyone I'd ever dated before. Um, I would say that dating outside of my race wasn't new to me, um, but dating someone who when I first met, I sensed that there was something uh, neuro spicy about my partner. And that was the first time I'd ever met someone like that, you know, and that's actually something we discovered throughout our relationship together that he might be on the spectrum. Um, but I sensed that there was something very different about the way that he viewed the world and the way that he communicated his feelings and the way that he wanted communicating feelings communicated back to him. There was something so wholesome and genuine about the way that he communicated that really made me second guess what I had accepted before him, if that makes sense. It was like, oh, wow, there are people who really want to sit down and have a two-hour conversation about what I'm comfortable with, what I'm not comfortable with, what my relationship history is, like really diving into it in the first few dates, you know, and that was something really special for me and his honesty about being polyamorous, what his legacy was with that, you know, like as a 18, 19 year old person, he's European, he's from France, coming from France to the United States, realizing that in the U.S. there is an albeit small for the United States, but large for California, <laughs> poly community. And coming here, realizing that there are people who lived in a way that he aligned with, wanting to start to show up as a polyamorous person, 
meeting other polyamorous people and trying for the first time this relationship style that takes a lot of work and communication and honesty. And he was very upfront with the ways that he had not been honest in the past and what he was working on at the time and being honest about his relationships with his other partners without divulging things that they wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable or safe with him sharing, which is also a big one. So there was so much there to this person than I knew was possible with another person. And so I feel like knowing him and getting to know him made me want to get to know myself and my politi relationship politics more and what I align with. And it opened my eyes a lot. I love that. And so I know you're kind of in this unfolding discovery and you've got, you know, more clarity than you had probably five years ago. So talk to me about some of the discoveries that you made about yourself. And I love that framing like relationship politics. I haven't heard that before. Yeah. And I feel like that's something like something big that I've recently discovered in my um, poly journey, as well as my bisexual journey. They definitely intersect as this idea of if you take on an identifier, then you should always be actively doing what is societally believed that someone in that identifier should do. For example, being poly, you're not polyamorous if you don't have multiple partners at a time. And unbreaking that, it's like, you are absolutely polyamorous even if you don't have multiple partners at a time. It's more so about the politics. Like for me, mm -hmm. I believe that it is completely possible for you to love more than one person at a time and for you to nurture more than one relationship. I think that it can be really healthy to be honest about having feelings for more than one person. And it can be a really like safe and like loving conversation with a partner that you already have. Like everything that I believe deeply affirms polyamory, whether or not I currently have the energy or the finances or the capacity to nurture and have more than one relationship. I think that's completely based on where you're at in life, where you're at in your self-growth. Like you will not always be dating multiple people at a time. You will not always have multiple relationships at a time. Sometimes it's just flirting. Sometimes it's just going on a date. Sometimes it's just being able to hold space for a romantic feeling or a romantic attraction to someone without feeling guilty about it because you already have a partner. Like it's so much more than just the act of going out and engaging with multiple people at a time. And I felt the same about my bisexuality where I grew up in a religious household and it was really hard for me to come out. It was really hard for me to even understand what these feelings were. And when I finally did realize like, you know, I do think the attraction I have for women is more romantic, is more serious than I was allowing myself the space to feel before. I started to feel very anxious that I wasn't dating women, that I wasn't, uh, romantically or sexually engaging with women and that pressure of well are you really bisexual if you've never been with both genders all the genders you know depending on who you're talking to and I realized recently like it took me 16 to 22 years to feel comfortable with men to feel and engage sexually with a man like that's something that we were taught and was accepted and was kind of, we were influenced by, for most of our young lives, this idea of cishet couplehood. And so even with that flooding, it still takes years and years and years for you to even feel comfortable being in any sort of relationship with the opposite sex, right? So it's kind of feels like a second puberty where I'm like, I feel like I should just be ready to date women because I know that I like them. But it's like, you didn't just jump on men when you first started liking them. You were nervous and you were scared and you made mistakes. And why do you feel like it should just be because you're an adult now that that process is going to be expedited, like giving myself the space to like be nervous for my hands to get clammy, for me to stumble over my words, for me to not know how to respond to a text. Like these are all very normal things at the budding start of exploring any level of sexuality. And so it's, it's been really nice to discover those two things, both about my polyamory and my bisexuality. I think that's so beautifully articulated and, um, 
I think so many folks that I talk to in our community kind of have a similar like concern that, oh, if I have this knowing about my own truth, but I'm not acting on it in the world, does it make it any less valid? And it's like, absolutely not. Like, absolutely and I think not. that that's so much of this journey. And I love what you're also pointing to about this kind of like the humanity in sexuality and in romance and in dating that like, doesn't matter who it is when there's some kind of like attraction or curiosity up it's like we're gonna get nervous we're going to feel uncomfortable like absolutely and and I think you're so right that there's so much conditioning layered on about how quickly we should feel ready to move on something what that should look like and I love how you're exploring it with like such self-integrity of just like really staying with yourself in the process and so I'm curious to hear a little more about that, like right now in your exploration and in the way that you're moving with bisexuality and like kind of like moving into that and like testing those waters, like what is, what are you practicing with? Like, what are some things you're committing to within yourself and Mm -hmm. what, um, what has the experience been like? That's a great question. Um, Something that I've been journaling about is ways in which I can convey to, um, I guess, is there, is there a term for like everyone who is non-male? You could say like AFAB, like a female at yeah. birth. Yeah. So how to talk to AFAB people and let them know that I'm being romantically inclined and not just friendly because that's something that I have to deal with a lot because I'm an extroverted person because I'm very bubbly very like emotive I find that a lot of people like to be around me and they like my energy but it's hard to read whether it's romantic or platonic and so there's so many times where I'm like oh my gosh she said it was cute but it's like what does cute mean like cute like a puppy or cute like I can take you on a date sometime And it's like trying to figure out within myself language I can use, ideas I can pose, things I can do that let these individuals know that I'm interested in a more romantic way. So there's less ambiguity because I feel like ambiguity in these situations doesn't help anybody, especially in times where it can still be very hard to be open about your sexuality, even in designated safe spaces. People go who are just starting to explore their sexuality, who aren't completely sure what they're into. And I know that it can be, as someone who experienced that myself, I know how it can be very intimidating um, to be approached, especially approached in a romantic way in a setting you may be unfamiliar with, but excited about, and with a gender of person that you might be unfamiliar with, but excited about. So trying to work on, like, premeditating on ways that I can communicate any potential feelings that might arise, as well as using a variety of both the dating apps and in-person meetups and meeting people through friends, like putting myself out there more as a person, not just on the apps, but using the apps to be the jumping off point to those in-person connections. I love that. Yeah, that's a definite um, I think definite thing and like the queer community in general is like, are you interested? Are you available? And I think that's so it's true about like, because it really could come down to the person, even if, I mean, it always comes down to the person ultimately, but like, yeah. if just cause you're attracted to women or like want to date women or eat bad people, it's like, what, you know, how do you communicate that it's about you? Like, it's about yes. you, I'm into you, <laughs> you know, like, work with that and name that. And um, yeah, so what comes up for you when you, um, like, have you had a crush recently? And like, what comes up in terms of how you want to like express that? Yeah, well, I actually did. I was on the apps and I actually saw someone who I'd went on one date with in the past and it was an amazing date but it was just like in a pre-pandemic world and then the pandemic happened and everything just kind of spiraled and so it was one of those things where so much had changed that I wasn't even sure if they would still be interested and or how the pandemic had affected them you know and so it kind of like faded in my mind but I saw them pop up again 
And I reached out and I realized like for me, I would want someone who felt like there was a misconnection to still reach out and try again, because you're never, you never really know if it was a misconnection on both sides or not. So why, why be shy? Cause the worst thing that can happen is they're not interested. And then it's like, okay, we're already planning for that. We know it's a 50, 50 chance. They're going to be into it or not into it. And so I actually reached out to her and I said, oh, like it's been a long time. Like you look great. It looks like you're doing some like really cool things with your life. Like, would you be interested in reconnecting? And so it's a TBD because I reached out (laughs) first. So I have to wait for her to reach back out. And so I'm trying not to think about it, but I'm hoping that she does. Oh, I love that. Yeah, good job. I feel like I'm like celebratory of the boldness yeah. to just like take the action. And I think, yeah. you know, this points to the one of the vulnerabilities of dating is like, it does require of us to like put our hearts out there and like kind of make Absolutely. a move or make it known that like there's this curiosity, there's this interest. And then there could be radio silence on the other end or there could yeah. be the absence of reciprocity. And so how are you working with that? I mean, it sounds like you have wonderful, you know, tools. Like, how are you working with that within yourself to um, to continue to, like, stay open to the longing, to the desire? I feel like, for me, I like to not overly romanticize things, but romanticize things in a way to, like, ease the painful moments like okay if she answers and we reconnect that's awesome there's promise there's opportunity there's like curiosity awesome if she doesn't answer okay well checking back in with self why was I so excited to reach back out to this person in the first place what was it about them that really stuck with me made me excited to see if there's another opportunity and then taking those things journaling about it writing down those traits or the things about their personhood that really was a glimmer in my mind and then using that to motivate who I want to continue to attract into my life and being very mindful of each person that is no longer in my life, what was it that kept them in my mind in the first place? Like, what was that thing about them or those things about them that really got me excited and realizing that there's so many people in the world who may contain those same traits, those same attributes, those same personality, like glimmers that I really liked and realizing that love is a lottery. Like love is a lottery. The more you play, the more opportunities you have to win. And so, especially as a polyamorous person, it's like, okay, I have the safety in my relationship to not have to limit the amount of dates I can go on or the the amount of love that I have if it no, if it doesn't affect my already previous existing relationship. And so it's like, okay, the world is your oyster. Go play. Don't be afraid. There's so many people out there. There's so many experiences to be had. Most of the people won't stay in your life, but many of them will impact it, both in positive and negative ways, which will only feed into what you know about yourself. And it's those learning lessons that grow us as people and only help our future partners. So yeah, I think there's so much wisdom in what you just shared about like really logging and and connecting to the essence of what's attracting you, the thing that's piquing your interest and then using that to fuel, you know, deeper discovery if it's not that specific person. Um, I love that. And it, and so I, I really hear you in the journey of it all. And like part of maybe what this is really about is just exploring and experiencing, but mm-hmm. I'm curious if you would capture that differently. Like what is it that your being is like craving to experience right now in love and relationship? I feel like I am craving for myself personally, the almost the confidence I had to approach people that I had when I was single, because I tell people I'm not, I'm not single, but I'm available. And that's my poly lingo. I'm not single, but I am available but I feel like I'm not acting on it as much as a part of myself would like to. So it's like, you know, you have your one partnership that is very safe, very comforting and giving you a lot of what you need. But then there's this other part of your identity that feels like it's on the back burner. It's not getting that time or that energy put in. So almost fighting my own fatigue or my own complacence 
to just be in that one relationship because it's too exhausting to find some another one. But I know that I owe it to the side of me that is attracted to other genders to have the space to get to know and explore that. So I often have to push myself, like, you know, go to more LGBTQ, queer events, go by yourself. I try to go by myself because I feel like when I go with a partner or I go with friends, I'm too absorbed in that. And then again, I'm not doing my goal, which is putting myself out there, meeting people, being confident and like reigniting that fire that I had when I was a single person. And so I feel like I've met quite a few um, women or AFAB people who are in partnerships who feel very similarly where it's like, I'm just so cozy in what I have, but I know that I owe it to myself to also be genuine and true to this part of me that does want to see the world and does want to experience that. I know I would be sad if I never had deep, intimate relationships with women. And I can't let, I can't let my own personal fatigue stop me from at least taking little baby steps to be getting myself into those situations, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It's like the, yeah, this kind of um, tension between having it comfortable enough and yet there are these parts of self that are like wanting to come out and play and explore. And it's like this, yeah, this sense of like self-responsibility and respect for all parts of being. And, and I love too that, you know, it's like that it's almost like whole in holding yourself in totality. It's not like, Oh, something's wrong in the relationship. Right. And this right. is obviously the premise of a lot of non-monogamy is like, there doesn't have to be a problem to want to explore. It's right. like, there are so many parts of self that are like, hi, I'm over here. Like, how about me? I'd like to come online and like, Definitely. see what's up, you know? <laughs> and so I love that for you. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think it's really nice to also have, um, it's nice to have a partner that is very excited for me, very happy for me. Whenever I'm talking to someone, he's like, oh, do you have a date set up? Like, what are you guys going to do? I think he's more excited sometimes than I am because he knows how important it is to me to have that. And so being that support system where it's like, I'm 110% excited for you. I want you to go know this. We're good. We're safe. We're comfortable. Like we don't have anything to worry about. Now use that extra energy you have to make this new dream be fulfilled. And I feel like if anything, the barrier is less my current partner and more future partners that I've talked to because I've also noticed that it is hard to find um, someone who is okay with my current partner being male. That's also a big Uh, hurdle is mm -hmm. there are lots of people who, for whatever reason, make sense with their soul. It aligns that they don't I guess it's like a bi erasure biphobia thing where it's like if she has a male partner or she's still interested in dating men, then she won't be able to commit to me or this won't be serious. It'll just be a side thing. This idea that bisexual women who have mainly dated men or are also dating men can't possibly commit to and love romantically and have a relationship with a woman And it feels very frustrating how many times in my dating journey I've encountered that and had to explain either make, it feels like making excuses for the fact that I have a male partner or that I have a male Caucasian partner. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's so many things at play there. And I think that has also given me pause at many times in my dating journey of, will I be able to find someone in this political climate and this social justice climate and all the things that are happening that will believe me when I say that as a Black, queer, fat, femme woman, like my whole identity is political. And I take all of that into consideration when dating and I wouldn't be dating someone that might look a certain way or be cishet without thoroughly gauging whether they would be an appropriate partner for me or someone I felt safe around or bringing other partners around. 
This is really, yeah. I just, I see the, the courage you're like really needing to lean into to honor all parts of yourself and say that, yeah. yes, this is the spectrum of my identity. This is the spectrum of people that I love. And like, I'm not going to like cut these parts off in order to fit into some sort of like right. way that I can be received. And I just, yeah, I see that sounds really difficult. And like, I, yeah, I putting I've, yourself out there. And <laughs> I've even had friends give me the suggestions of like, oh, well, don't just don't put him on your profile when you're dating or like, don't let people mm. see. But to me, it seems disingenuous. Like this right. is someone that I love, that I'm excited to love every day. This is someone that's a big part of my life. And if you are going to be in my life, you have to be completely and totally accepting of their role and position in my life. And I don't want to waste either of our times being with someone or getting to know someone who will to their core not accept the relationship that I already have it's both of us or neither of us and I think that's something that both me and my partner feel where it's like our other partners don't have to date our current partner they don't have to have any sort of romantic or sexual relationship at all like we don't believe in that personally um if that overlap happens cool awesome but it never has to and so, but you do have to be aware that this is someone who plays a great ongoing impact in my life and you will hear their name. They will be around sometimes. They are going to have a presence. Um, and I don't want to make our love small that already exists in the pursuit of creating a new love. Because mm -hmm. I feel like if it's right, then that person or those people will want to embrace him into their community as much as they want to love me because to love me means to care for the people that I care about, whether it be a partner, a friend, a family member, like that's the companionship aspect of dating is very important to me. And part of being a companion is being a friend, is being a confidant, is being all of these things that are not just a lover. And so I think, you know, yet another thing that makes dating hard is looking for companionship, first and foremost, looking for someone who's going to want to sit down and help you with your taxes if you don't know how to do it, or someone who sees that you're having a hard day and they volunteer to just like make dinner or to help take some weight off of yourself, you know, like the hot and steamy stuff will always be there if there's a connection, but it, finding the companionship with people, I think is the hardest thing. I love everything you're saying. And I think it's such um, an important thing, like, as you're speaking to, yeah, not to hide any part of who's in your life and who you're dating, because the right person for you from like, a, you know, from all angles, I imagine will be somebody who's curious to ask you, hey, what's it like to date this person? I know I had initial reactivity, but like, you seem fine. Tell me yeah, about it. You know, like definitely. having, you know, like leading with curiosity about your experience versus like, you know, and some people it might, it just might not work for them and that's valid too. And yeah. then they're just not going to be right for you, but yeah, that's big. <laughs> it's a hurdle for sure. And I think that there's all of these politics into play that you just don't, you don't necessarily get like through the mainstream dating apps. I feel like there's not really much of a forum to have these kind of discussions. There's no little identifier that's going to be able to explain these complexities. And it feels like, you know, there's so much more that we can do towards reigniting that empathy and curiosity between people who have yet to meet, you know? Yes. And it takes a conversation. It does. It takes some like care about the subtlety and the nuance. It's like, we can't just see somebody's profile and know about their heart and their spirit and the direction mm -hmm. they're moving in life and the things that are important. It's like, yeah. it does take care. And so, yeah, I'm so with you in that. <laughs> I know that when my partner first saw my profile, he was like, he was a little bit surprised, but interested that I said that I um, was like religious or spiritual. And then when we actually met, he asked me about it and I explained it to him and he was like, oh, that's not what I was thinking you meant by that at all. Like, that's really cool. Like what you just explained to me. And like, I wish that there was a way that I could have known more about that coming into this. So I didn't have to have any like fears or anxieties. And I'm just like, I wish there was too. And I know that that's something that's hard to talk about. Like 
via text like you just have to feel someone's spirit when they're talking about something like gender race sexuality like anything it's like those topics just feel too powerful to be trying to convey it through characters on the phone and it's like you know thankfully we were able to get to that initial meeting to have that conversation to see that we were more aligned than we thought but I know that a lot of times misconnections happen because you see something on their profile or you have a quick view of something that turns you off but you don't really know the full story behind that thing and it could have not not been anything like what you were expecting a thousand percent yeah it's so true so I'm curious about like things you've learned about yourself that might have surprised the you five years ago or the you that was like mm. start, you know dating a while back like what are some ways that you yeah like that you've really created your own path in a way that has surprised you mm. if if that's true yeah um I think the me five years ago would be surprised at how much I advocate for myself now because I used to be the kind of person having abandonment issues and an anxious attachment style giving all of the time for fear that if I don't there'll be no reason for someone to stay being one of those people that's like I because I have it to give, or so I thought, because I have it to give, I'll just continue to give. And then there'll be no way that this person can't see what I have to offer. And just like draining myself with trying to make myself lovable. And I used to always curate myself. That was a big one that I come back to a lot. If I had a person over, I had to look perfect, smell perfect. The apartment had to give off the perfect ambiance, perfect number of candles. The food had to be cooked perfectly. I had to leave it in until it was warm right when they got there and then take it out. So the house smells like, like it was so curated that I was out of body for the entire experience. And I feel like that's something that we don't talk about a lot, which is this idea of showing up for dates in a way that is so curated that you're not even enjoying yourself because you're not fully present because you're trying so hard to make sure that the experience looks and is a certain way for the other person. And so I spent so much time in my younger dating years trying to make sure that I appeared dateable and that I was what other people might want me to be. And the me now is so like, of course, there are still dates that I want to take the time to curate and have everything be perfect, but it's not laced in anxiety. It's not for fear of them leaving if I don't. It's now because I want to, and I also get to fully enjoy it and be present, and I'm doing it for me and them, not just for them. It's not just a tribute to that person, but instead a tribute to our relationship or a tribute to us as two people getting to know each other. So I think that that took a lot of recognizing a lot of self-work and a lot of being like the best part of dating and getting to know other humans is how it makes you feel and how it ignites you and how it teaches you new things about yourself and if you're not fully present in these experiences then you're losing a lot of that magic that you're in it for in the first place so just being more present being unapologetic when communicating and just like being more grounded in rooting for myself and advocating for myself is something that I would have never thought possible five years ago yes I love this so <laughs> much yeah, I love that like that you're actually able now to find joy in some of those celebratory acts because they are for you and the other person versus it's a performance or like you need yeah. to keep them in some way um, oh yeah, I love this so much. So I have one more question before we yeah. wrap up and it kind of ties into, um, what you were talking about on your profile and like spirituality. I'm curious about the ways in which dating and relationships for you is a spiritual practice in some sense. Mm. I feel like dating is completely spiritual in the way that it is two or more individuals or souls coming together to try to understand each other a little bit better and see how they can make each other's lives a little bit more peaceful, a little bit more coherent, a little bit more cared for. And I think that for me, when I think of spiritual, I think of like chakras and bodily alignment and all of these things, as well as any like exterior higher power, you know, 
types of situations. I think it's also like being in touch with your body is very spiritual. Being in touch with like your, the space you take up on this planet. Like all of these are very spiritual acts. And I feel like when you're dating, like you are sharing energy with someone else. You don't know who you're affecting positively. You don't know who you're inspiring. You don't know what just having a good conversation or a good connection with someone does for another person. And I think we've almost forgotten like the joy that you can bring someone else just from having a nice dinner, even if it doesn't amount to anything, just good conversation, making someone feel seen, making someone feel heard and them doing the same for you. Like that puts so much positive energy into the world and hopefully implores people to continue to give those good feelings to other people once they've met you. And so I feel like it's also like a, it's an act of, like revolution and power to be like successfully dating and leaving good impressions on people. And I mean, leaving impressions on people in general, because I don't think impressions are necessarily good or bad, but just like powerful. So like if your presence, if your mindset, if your way that you date or love or feel is able to change someone and broaden their mindset in any sort of way, that's helping humanity. That's helping all of us. So I feel like dating is even like a political revolutionary act. Like we have so much power and connection with other people. Oh, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> that is everything right there that you just said. <laughs> I'm like getting goosebumps. I'm gonna like start crying because I feel like you're touching on the whole reason I feel like hum hum exists is exactly yeah. what you're talking about. It's like making the world and creating opportunities to impact people for the better with like every single opportunity. And I feel like that's exactly how you're approaching it. So my heart is like exploding right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so sweet. Uh, yeah. So I feel like we've covered so much. Is there anything else that, um, whether it be something that's really alive for you or like words of wisdom that you want to leave our yeah. community with before we wrap I would say to anyone watching this who is struggling with their dating life or monogamy versus non-monogamy or their orientation, who they love, who they want to love, um, no relationship is perfect and it will not look perfect to everybody. Shed yourself of this belief that other people have to affirm your relationship. They don't. The only one who needs to affirm your relationship is you and the people you're in that relationship with. It is nobody else's business. If it works for you, if you're comfortable, you're being cared for, and it's a safe place for you to explore yourself and grow, no one else has to understand. And you don't have to explain yourself to anybody. Just live in your truth, stay honest with yourself, and you'll always be in a good position. Yes. So good. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok, here you come. <laughs> I know, I'm here. I'm here. Hire me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Ella. This was Thank such you. a rich conversation. And I feel like you have so much incredible experience and wisdom to share. And I'm really excited for you and the path you're on and the ways yeah. your heart is moving in the world. So thank and you. And I'm for excited sharing. to bring it to Hum Hum. Yes. Let's yes, go. Exactly. Here we come. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. All right. I'm going to stop our recording here. Okay.